Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on Sidelines, we're down here in Hollywood. Hey, JP, how yeah. are you? Good. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you, Johnny. Johnny and I, we're good friends. He checks in with me when he's in town. But we're going to look at shutter speed and how to fix time lapse. So let's get started and see what we can do. Before you watch this tutorial, sign up for our business coaching class. Take advantage of my almost 30 years of business experience. Let me help you grow your business. Sign up today. Now get back to the lesson. The reason we're down here in Hollywood is we want to look at how shutter speed affects time lapse. We came to a place where there's lots of people walking around. That's going to give us background and give us an example on how time lapse is affected by shutter speed. When you have a short shutter speed, and we'll start out at a 60th of a second, people are going to be more staccato. They're going to kind of beep, 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 beep through the frame. As you lengthen the shutter speed, they're going to start to blur. You get this kind of poetic kind of motion in the image, and you can get it almost so long, you get two seconds or four seconds that eventually the people just almost disappear. They're just little wisps of color in the shot. That can look beautiful. It gives you the option of setting someone in place. When that person stands still, everyone's blurring around them. And it has a nice look. It's an interesting look. Or you can put an object there, like a, a tree or a building or a whatever, and things start to blur around it. So there's four things, remember, that control time lapse. One is ISO, two is shutter speed, three is aperture, and four is interval. So today we're gonna to keep our aperture pretty much the same, ISO the same, and our interval pretty much the same, and just take a look at how shutter speed controls motion in the time lapse. One of the important things we're gonna use for something like this is an ND filter, because it's just impossible to get the shutter slow enough in sunlight or bright daylight to give yourself a one second or two second exposure. So you've gotta use an ND filter, something that will crush the exposure and allow you to get long exposures. You can do this in broad sunlight if you want, just crank that down in order to get your exposure correct. It allows you to get to a one second, two second. You can do four seconds or more uh, using an ND filter. It's almost imperative when you're shooting time lapse outside. If you want that kind of motion blur, you got to have an ND filter. So today we're using our SERP equipment. We've got a Genie and a Genie Mini. We're running them separately and both of them at the same time because we want to be able to do two shutter speeds at the same time, be able to kind of see those side by side. It'll be the same people walking through kind of gives us a better comparison of exactly how motion or the shutter speed is going to affect the time lapse. So we're doing two of them, We've got a little move on it, so it starts off and just kind of pans across, which is really nice, just gives us a little bit of dynamic to the frame, looks really nice in the time lapse. We're shooting at 24 millimeters because we want people to be up front and close to us. It allows us to be right in the crowd uh, versus a longer lens, so that wide lens gives us the ability to get people up close. And just a small little move, about 20 degrees, and it looked really nice. So now let's take a look at the time lapse. So let's start out with our first example at a 60th of a second. When you're shooting at a 60th of a second, we have a frozen frame of each person. So they basically jump through the frame. So all your people are gonna be jumping through the frame as you go through the frame. We're gonna lengthen it out to a 25th of a second. Now they're gonna to start to blur just a little bit because they're moving quick enough that there's just a little bit of blur on the image. We'll then lengthen that again to 1 15th of a second. There's much more blur in the people. You see the people, but you still can tell who they are. You can see that they're there. You can tell who the people are. It's pretty easy to identify them, but we're getting a nice blur starting to happen. So when we go to a half of a second, people start to blur. You still recognize them, tell that they're people. It's not hard to see them, but they blur quite, they start to blur quite a bit. When you go to one second, I, I love one second. There's a nice motion and a nice blur on one second. When you go to two seconds, it's a lot of blur. Uh, it starts to become wisps of color. It looks really pretty in some situations. We stood Jack in there, my good friend Johnny, he stood in there and we shot him at one second shutter at 6.3. And that gave us a nice kind of look. Take a look at that time lapse. The Serb equipment is fabulous for a couple of reasons. The Genie and the Genie Mini are both just very simple to use. Simple menus, you can do a preview to see your move. When you stack them, you've got two moves now. You can put it on a slider, so you got a slider, and then the Mini becomes your pan. It becomes great motion control together. So the Genie Mini works all with an app off your phone. You simply push this thing around and you can move it to where you want the move to start. And then you move it to where the move is gonna end. And there's your distance is gonna travel. I always put it on live view or video uh, mode so I can see the move. I test the move, I preview it, 
Once I love it, I switch it back to stills, make sure you turn your autofocus off, and then you hit start, and it starts taking your pictures. Autofocus is bad news when it comes to time lapse because it's gonna make your image breathe, or the autofocus will keep your camera from taking an image because it can't find a focus. So make sure you set your focus, turn the autofocus off, or don't even use the autofocus, whatever you choose to do. Just to wrap this up, remember, don't just take the shutter speed that your camera gives you because of the light that's available. Learn to use ND so you can control it, make it longer if you want it, give you the shutter speed you want. Look at those motions. Choose the motion blur that's going to be best for your subject matter. There's no wrong answer here. Short to long, just depends on the application and what you like. But just make it a creative decision. Great, Scott, control that shutter. Didn't your mother-in-law teach you to control that shutter? So keep those comments rolling, keep on clicking. The Solano Lens Business Coaching Class is back by popular demand. People are asking for it. Some people were asking for it. There was a person who asked for it. That one guy who asked for it, we're back on March 3rd. We're gonna have a free business coaching class that day, an hour and a half where I'll teach you a daily routine for success, help you to grow your business starting that next day. March 3rd, sign up for the free call.